What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Guess who it is? Your favorite person in the whole wide world, the lead fighter himself, Onyx Ngal, back today and in the ring with someone from across the pond, from the other side of the world, from my, uh, you know, home country, from India. He's joining us today. He's going to teach us how he builds multi-million dollar e-commerce stores for clients sitting all the way in India. So it's gonna be a really fun conversation. Him and I got connected, in case you're wondering how we got connected. We got connected because I'm out looking to learn e-commerce. I wanna learn how to build big brand, scalable e-commerce businesses. And uh, he left a comment, I got intrigued, we started talking, and then I thought, you know what? Um, instead of me learning from you and just having it be that, why don't you come on to our podcast and let's, uh, let's let everybody learn. So welcome, uh, uh, I'll introduce him in just a second, but before I do that, of course, I have to selfishly plug all my stuff. Onikpodcast.com for all the binge listening needs that you have, learn, L-U-R-N.com to join the entrepreneurial revolution. It's free to sign up for a free account. Um, and I think that's all the promo stuff I got for the day. So stepping into the ring today, uh, being brave enough, all the way from India, help me welcome Mr. Bado Pandey. Bado, man, thanks so much for being here. I know it's a weird hour for you as well, and you stayed up just for us. It means the world to me. Thanks for being on today. Um, man, I don't know if you know where to start. You look very young. We've never met before. This is our first time talking. But you've done some incredibly impressive stuff. You sold over $50 million worth of products for your clients in e-commerce through paid ads. That's insane. Can I, do you mind me asking, how old are you? You look young. I'm 20. Wow, dude, that is impressive. So when did you start this business of help? Like when did you start your agency? Like when I was 17 or 18. So like when I was 18, like I just went to, through it, like starting an agency, but I was learning through when I was just 17. So yeah. Man, I, I'm, 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 it's not easy for me to be speechless, by the way. I don't usually am not speechless or without words. This is so impressive. Congratulations on all your crazy success. So you have, how much have you spent now on behalf of clients, of course, in paid media in these three years? How much would you say you spent? Maybe I might have spent like 30 million or about that. So currently, if you will see, like currently I'm spending about $1 million every month on paid ads just for clients. So every month. That's that's incredible. All right. So do you have a team? Yeah, like we are a small team, like we are a small team of just three to four people. And okay. we basically like we work with handful of clients at the moment because like when it gets big, then like it gets messy. So I just like to keep like things small, but we just like we are very selective with the clients we work with and we can help them scale. So, yeah, that's what we basically. Is do. that your main business? You're an agency that helps e-commerce stores scale. Um, do you do anything else on the side? Do you have your own e-commerce stores or? No, like I don't have any e-commerce stores where when I was starting, then I started like, you know, small e-commerce store to learn and everything. But now like agency is my main stuff. And apart from this, I do a lot of content as well. Just like, you know, uh, like uploading content and how to grow your e-commerce brand, paid ads, like creative strategies and, and all those on LinkedIn and Twitter. And but my agency is the main thing I do. How did you get into this? So you're 17. Tell me the story. Like how did uh, you said you started an e-commerce store, but like take me all the way back to your first, what did you Google something and find an internet marketer you started following? Like, how did you get into this? So like when I was like 17, 18, then I wanted to make money, right? So because <laughs> like, uh, like there was necessities, like I wanted to make money. Then I just started searching how to make money online. Then I went through like, you know, uh, learned about freelancing and all those stuff that you can make money through Fiverr and Upwork. So I started freelancing on these websites. And then I like, you know, I found like you can start e-commerce and all those stuff as well about Shopify stores and everything. So I started building Shopify stores. I started like, you know, doing graphic design and each and everything for these brands. And then I realized like, you know, that niches are in the niche, like right? riches are in the niches, right? So I should focus on one thing, like which is paid ads and just for Shopify brands. And if I'm gonna be expert it, at it, then like I can make a lot, like hell lot of money. So that's why yeah. I thought like, you know, let's be specialized in this. And then like, you know, I sl slowly and steadily from there, I like, you know, like started like an agency as a solo person. And then I started to have one of four, like one or two people then accordingly. How'd you get your first client? Because you're young, you're sitting in India, it's not like you had your own huge e-commerce store to hang off of. So how'd you convince someone first? How'd you get that first client? 
yeah so like in terms of clients what i do is like when i started like i was doing small works on fiverr and all those but in terms of first client i got through like you know slack communities so these are like you know niche based slack communities right where like e-commerce store owners hang out and all those stuff so like they there are job checks and like where they post i need some help with this and that right so there was an e-commerce store owner who posted that i need help with this so i just messaged him that hey i have done this like you know on fiverr and upwork i can do for you as well right and i won't charge unless like you know we are profitable and you can pay, pay me from there so like from there i got like you know first client and from there i managed like you know ads for one or two store for him but and accordingly like i got the experience now showing that experience i started working with an agency so that got me like you know so i started managing huge budgets from for them right because it's completely different story when you are managing 4 5 thousand dollar a month and when you are ma- managing like you know 100 200 3000 300000 dollar a month right mm-hmm. so like you know using like i did a lot of free work you can say like and using those like you know results i was able to get like you know like be to show that to people and then i got like you know paid work right and from mm-hmm. there i learned how to like manage this high budgets and from then onwards i was able to so you got a job you actually went and got a job with someone like after you got your first client you said you joined an agency or you started your agency it's a contract like they they okay. had clients i just like asked like they were passing me one to two clients and like i was managing the ads for them and you don't do that anymore now it's just you have your own agency now yeah yeah because now like i focus on a lot of content like through linkedin through my twitter and all those so that's how yeah. i like you know i upload a lot of content on every day what we are doing and what's working so like people like you know just send me message that hey i love your content we want to work with you and see so that's how i get major majority of my leads and that's how i grow how how do you charge are you the usual agency structure of 10% of ad spend or how how do you guys charge it's like you know fixed fee of like you know $2000 and like mm-hmm. and upon that we charge based upon like you know percentage of roas so like in okay. terms of like you know the more we make you the more we can like you know get so it's like win win situation for my clients and me as well so like it incentivizes us to perform better because if we are performing better then you are also making more and we are also making more yeah no i love that that that's great man that's an awesome model um so I'm assuming no college. You're not wasting time in college. Okay, I have to ask you a question because I'm Indian. I know you're from India, right? So how'd your parents take that? Like nothing like personal because like when I like I was studying in college and like I was I went through the college for three four months, but like then like I started making like what like like they can even. like they can't even imagine so like i showed them this is something and this is i want to pursue more and more so like i yeah. just took my side hustle into main thing that's great though man it's it's hard like in in especially in india the, the i i always joke that i was done with college after the first 2 years i did not want to do any more but the last 2 years i did it anyways i finished it only because i you know just wanted to make sure my dad was happy <laughs> like that's the truth like i just did it because i wanted to make sure um i didn't uh, upset my dad but that's amazing what a great story so first a second third time i'm saying it but i mean every word uh, congratulations on all your success um i'm sure we'll get more and more of your story soon but let's dive right into some meat of the content right let's get a chance to learn more about how you think about stuff so i'm going to give you a fictitious example um i've come to you today I have an e-commerce store. Oh, you know what? Before we do this, sorry. I want to backtrack. What kinds of clients do you currently represent? What kind of products are they selling? Give me give me the range of the different types of products you're currently helping se- sell. So, yeah, like basically it's like whole range of product I'm currently working with in terms of like, you know, subscription based CPG. So CPG is like, you know, huge amount. So like we work with like 3 to 4 what's, CPG brands. What's uh, a consumer CPG? pack consumer packaged goods. So it's like, you know, uh like you can say which is subscription based right smoothies like subscription based smoothies subscription based meats and all those stuff so okay. that's like you know like cpg brand like you can say drinks and all those comes under this cpg brands as well as skincare okay. also comes under cpg so okay. like that's like you know some like we work with three to four brands who are into cpg and apart from that like we work with jewelry as well as you can say like some fashion and apparel brand so yeah we work okay. with like across the niches 
Got it. So how about one, let, now I know, I have an idea for an example I want to give. Um, you said jewelry, you said fashion brands, and I told you earlier I have a watch brand, and um, I want to sell more of my watches. So let's just say, now, I don't, so for those of you listening, I don't get into the specifics of my watch brand or the revenue or what we do, but we do very well, and we have a lot of room to grow. But let's just make up a number for now and say I came to you, Badal, and I said, we do $10,000 a month in watch sales and we want to grow that to $100,000. Let's just say that's the uh, that's the number. Um, where do you start? So I, here I am, I've signed you on, I am your client. Walk me through the systematic process that you guys have. Do you have like a step-by-step -step process? Is there a first thing you do, then a second, then a third? I'll turn it over to you, take it away. Yeah, so like when we are starting, like a lot of people do the mistake that they want to like, you know, start all the channels as, at once, right? I want to do mm -hmm. Facebook, I want to do Google, I want to do Pinterest, like TikTok, everything. But I feel that's not a right way to go. Like, like if you're just starting, start with Facebook, right? Make one channel, which is like focus on that and make it work, right? Make it profitable for you. And once you grow, like you are making like, you know, 40, 50 K a month. Now, like look at you, like you can say like Google, you, now you can start Google retargeting, Google shopping and all those as well and now let's say like you know you are you have started making 70 80k a month then like you should focus on CRO conversion rate optimization I feel like you know there's a lot of room for brands in conversion rate optimization that they miss right like if you are just like you know instead of one like 0.5 conversion rate you increase your conversion rate to two then like you can say like your ROAS will just like you know double or something like that in just like you know if you can just improve that con that conversion rate okay so conversion, conversion is the first thing you focus on. No, like first it's like paid ads in paid ads, like first focus on Facebook ads, like scale okay. it to like, you know, certain level, let's say like scale it to like, you know, maybe like 15, $50,000 a month. You are just doing through Facebook ads. Now, like this is the channel, which is working for me. Now I, I'm going to explore Google as well. Right now I'm going to start Google retargeting, Google shopping and all those as well. So now like, you know, like, because if you are just going to start like focusing on all, all the channel at once, you won't be able to like, you know, prioritize and make it work. Like start yeah. with one channel, make it work and then go on to another channel. And like, now also like we haven't figured it out, but like TikTok is also like getting like, you know, huge results for some of our clients. So like we are also focusing a lot on that, but like I would suggest like start with Facebook, then when you like, you know, found winning formula, like, and we have scaled quite a bit, then like go through Google, TikTok and all those channels as, as well. So let me ask you a question. How are you, cause this came up in our company. So I'm going to deviate from the step-by-step -step process and ask a personal question. Um, one of my partners for the watch brand, he's from India um, and he, you know, he's an e-commerce expert and we were talking about how we should look at TikTok and he runs all of our advertising. So he said, well, TikTok's banned in India. I can't get on. How are you getting on to TikTok to run your client's ads? Yeah. So like we, I'm using like VPS, virtual private yeah. server. Okay. So like Got I'm it. using AWS VPS. So, which is like, you know, like I can use VPN, but like, you know, it's not like, you know, the one time, one time shot, like, you know, method, like it can like, you know, affect my other like Facebook accounts and all those as well. So I'm using AWS VPS and to run like, you know, ads through for all of my clients. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So let's dive deeper. You said that the first thing you do is pick the channel. You like to do Facebook ads first. So I came to you, I'm doing $10,000 a month. I haven't been able to scale it. I mean, so you said, hey, first we scale you up on Facebook, but talk through that. How do you scale that? Let's break it down further. What are you gonna do on Facebook to with a with a watch brand or with a jewelry brand? So like in terms of Facebook, it's like basically I feel like, you know, in terms of Facebook, there are two to three, like, you know, specific thing that works. One is your creative, like second is your offer and landing pages and like how you structure your ad account, right? Uh, like, as you also know, like, you know, power five, which is like more, mainly we focus on simplified ad account structure. So there are accounts in which we are like, you know, uh, spending $10,000 a day. And in those accounts also, we are just having like, you know, running five campaigns only, right? Because we focus on simplified ad account structure because like that allows us to scale a lot. And in terms of like, uh, creative, so like, that's the most important part, right? How you can like, you know, make a creative that works like you should have initial hook, right? 
like first three second hook then you should be showing the usp of the product how it's different from other and all those stuff and like you know then you can show like you know a great call to action and all those right and once you create the ads now break down like you know like see the data right where there is leak right that like you need to understand the data that why if ad is not working why it's not working and accordingly you need to tweak each and every part of the like you know funnel and make make it profitable got it so what kind of creatives work better for you image ads video ads story ads what are you finding to work better in e-commerce so like in e-commerce as usually like you user generated content works really well as you might be knowing everyone says that like user generated content which is like native to to the platform uh, which feels like you know they're like it's like told by someone else right you know it's recommended by a friend and all those stuff but in user generated content as well like you know if you will see nowadays there are a lot of like apps coming like you know where you can just send the product and they will give a review but sometimes we have found like you know those review don't sound authentic authentic and like you know like that to the audience so if like you know if you're also creating user generated content then make sure it looks authentic right and not something like you know someone is paid to tell the story about the content so user generated i have heard this a lot so for example in our watch brand we're going out and reaching out to all the people that we've sold watches to and saying hey send us your story send, you know send us pictures of you wearing it do you think pictures are better or videos are better i feel like both of the things right uh, like like videos work really well but like you can also do pictures and all those but it depends upon the ad account as well which one's working well but i feel like you know with, with watches and fashion like videos work really well got it okay so focus heavily on getting our customers to give us you know video content of them wearing it and then you know run those ads like how much do you focus on the description above the video do you put a lot there do you keep it super short and let the video live on its own or do you make that description longer no like it depends right you know sometimes we have long descriptions as well sometimes we have short description as well so depending upon the like you know products nature like how we want to see like uh, do like how we want to pro so what would you what would you do for a watch i feel like you know like a short description would really work well short sure, description got yeah. it and uh, how long does it matter how long the video is like if the customer does like a tw 20 second review versus a 2 minute review does one work better than the other i feel like the good point is between if it's like between 15 to 45 second it's a good like you know point to have the video got it and um Okay, so that that's that's super helpful and awesome. I've heard a lot about the user generated content side of things. Um, all right, so we talked about the creative. You said images, products, um, images, and and uh, videos both work well. You mentioned earlier, so spe specifically sticking to the Facebook ads part, you specifically said account structure. Keep it simple. What does that mean? Talk to me a little bit about that. Like when you're spending, like, you know, some people have like, you know, 10, 20 campaigns in their ad account, right? But like when you have the, those, like you're competing with your own self with the, like, you know, you can say like making the decision and all those stuff. But what we do is like make the ad account really simple. The structure of ad account really simple, right? We just have like, you know, five to six campaign at one time running. And like, we make it very simple. Uh, we don't like to like because you might have heard like power five which is of facebook like you know utilize facebook's algorithm to work for you not against you so like yeah that's why like we how do you structure your campaign like is a campaign like so let's say we have five watches one ad account but these watches target different types of people so would I do one campaign per watch or a five campaigns per watch? Because the audiences are a little different for each of the watches. Um, does, does that make sense? Like, so let's say you have multiple products. Do you still only do, hey, every ad account should only have five campaigns in it? Yeah, like uh, it depends. But like, you know, we don't go beyond six to seven campaigns because like okay. then the ad account structure really like, you know, like the performance really dips down. So we focus more on consolidated ad account, which is like simplified ad account structure. Okay. And then within those campaigns, how many ad sets do you put inside of each one? Between like three to five ad sets at one time. Okay. Three to five ad sets. And, and like how, in, how, 
in each ad set we have between three to five ads okay and how are the ad sets separated are they separated by targeting are they separated by ad type like how are you separating them like we are like it depends right in terms of ad times like if you're testing audience then separate it by like you can say targeting right if you're testing creatives then separate it by like you know uh, you can say like creative at at creative right when you're like you know testing like audience then separate it by targeting when you're testing creatives then separate it by ad creative type right so mm-hmm. also when you're running and testing ad sets then like keep one interest in each ad set right not more than that so let's say like you know one you have one ad set the interest should be like watches right second ad set the interest should be men and fashion something like that right because okay. if you have like you like after three or four days, then you will know which one is performing and which one is not right. Because if mm. you will have a lot of interest in one ad set, then how will you know like which ad set is performing and which one is not? Okay. So five to uh, six to seven campaigns, max three to five ad sets within each of those campaigns and each ad set targets only one interest, not multiple. Um, and then you said three to five ads, I think within each ad set. Yeah. Wow, that's super helpful. All right, that was awesome. I don't know if I, for those of you who are listening, might be some people might be going, huh? But that was just that was like a like a PhD in ecom Facebook ads right there. Super simple. I'm actually gonna go check this. Like when we're done, I'm gonna go check what we're doing right now on ours. Um, great. Okay, so so talk to me about the the offer, the landing pages. What have you found to work well? Uh, where what are some tips that you immediately look for? Or things you immediately make your clients do? Yeah. So like, as we were on the ad account structure, so like, as I told, like, you know, we are running five to six campaigns. So we have like three to like three campaigns for top of the funnel cold audience, one campaign for middle of the funnel warm audience, and one campaign for bottom of the funnel hot audience, right? And accordingly, this is how we mainly structure the ad account. And in terms of like offer and landing pages, what we have found, like, it's like, every time like you know you are running a campaign think how you can like you know either reduce your cpa or increase your aov right if you want to be profitable like either you can reduce your cost per purchase or your you can increase your like you know average order value so that's how we think of like you know being profitable with it and one more thing which i found like it's kind of difficult when your product value is below 40 dollars to make it profitable but I found when the product values between like sixty dollar to one fifty or one sixty seventy, then it's like you know sweet spot where like you know people purchase it. It's also an impulse buy, but like it's not luxury, right? Because it's below like one seventy one eighty dollar, and also it's an impulse buy, so people can purchase. So I feel like that's a great sweet sweet spot if your product is between sixty to one seventy one eighty dollar. And if your product is below $40, right, then like how you can bundle the product, how you can show it to people that it looks like, you know, they buy it more. So let's say we had a client whose average order value was $30, right? So like, it's really hard to make him profitable, right? So what we did, we had, we shown the, like, you know, we bundled it. So whenever you go to landing page, then there was an offer. If you buy one product, then it's for $30. If you buy two products, then it's for $50, right? So we are incentivizing the customer to buy two products instead of one. And we also like, you know, in that top, we have written like free shipping above $40. So like, it's like how we are trying to play with the psychology. So like our average order value increases and yeah, yeah. with small products as well. <clears throat> that always works on me. The free shipping above X has <laughs> worked on me every single time I buy stuff online. Okay, great. So now we got this. Let's say I came to you, you scaled us. We're 10 to, we went from 10,000 a month to 50,000 a month. We're doing Facebook ads. You know, we got the creative loop going on. So again, if you're looking at doing e-commerce ads, I think my biggest takeaway from just that last 10 minutes was number one, user generated content for the ads. Number two, the campaign structure. That was huge, right? So, and it, and it was also very relieving. It was like, oh, that's all you have to do. It's not like some complicated um, thing. How, okay, here's a question. How many ad creatives do you rotate per week to test in a million dollar a year store? That's a question I want to ask you million dollar a year store so we might be spending about like 300k or some might be like you know 20 30 thousand dollar a month like in ad spend right yeah so yeah in those type like i feel two to like three creatives are more than enough to like you know test every week so three a week okay 
uh, let's say it's a $10 million store and you're spending $300,000 a month. How much does that go up to? Like we like stash between 10 to 15 or sometimes even 20 creatives a week. So also in terms of creative, you don't need to like, you know, make new creatives every time. So what we do is like, you know, let's say this is a creative, which is working for you. What we will do, we will just change like, you know, first five to 10 seconds of the video. Right. And like, we will create a different version of it. Right. So that's how we like to see the change the creative, right? Let's say like, you know, we are focusing on each hook and sales angle through it. Do you, um, it's so, it's so crazy. Do you know a guy named Rittaban? Rittaban, yeah. see, it, do you, uh, have you learned any of this from him? Uh, I like, I have watched his. Okay. I, the reason I ask you is everything you're saying is what he tells me. Um, and so I'm like, cause he says it too. He just changed the first five, five, six seconds of, and you have a new creative. And he's literally said that to me. Um, you, you should get to know him. I'll introduce you guys. He's awesome. He lives out in Chandigarh, lives in India, does amazing stuff with Shopify and e-commerce. Um, wow. Very helpful, man. That right there. I feel like we could just go ahead and end the interview. And this was like super freaking helpful. Now I know there's a lot of people watching going, huh? Um, this was advanced. Okay. I'm just letting everybody know this was totally advanced stuff. Um, okay. So we got Facebook doing its thing. Where do we go next? I feel like now, once you have this channel fixed, now you should focus on omni channel marketing, right? Now you should go, like, you know, start focusing on Google ads, start your Google display. So like all the customers you have, like they should not like, you know, you are retargeting them each and everywhere. Right. So, okay. So for, so next is Google display, not, not like YouTube or search ads immediately. Your next is Google display. Like not, I was just saying Google display, but like, it's like basically Google retargeting, right? Start your Google, okay. uh, YouTube, Google display search as well, just for retargeting. And if like, you know, the product allows, so like, it's not for every product. It depends upon from product to product. If there are a lot of searches, then start shopping as well, because shopping also works really well. Okay. Got it. For something like a watch that's targeted to a very, very specific audience would Google shopping work. I feel like, you know, it also depends like how many searches are there. And if you're, if you have good SEO, right? Because with shopping, Google shopping, you cannot do any targeting, right? If like yeah. people are searching for your product and it's showing like, you know, your product should be picking up from your searches. Google will pick it. Yeah. From I, I, yeah it doesn't, to me, this is such a specific niche that we target that I, I don't think it would be something that would be huge on Google shopping at least. Um, but for example, you said you have uh, your consumer package goods smoothie, right? So someone might type in, uh, you know, digestive smoothie and assuming that, the, that then Google shopping would bring up your smoothie possibly. Is that a good example? What we are doing like, yeah, that's a good example. But what we will do is like, we will create another landing page, which will have keyword targeting as digestive smoothie, right? If there are wow. enough interest for it, because like, there are lots of people competing what with like, you know, for the same stuff. We want to be like, you know, we should have like, you know, high ranking with Google in terms of what we are displaying. So not only like, you know, you should, you should are running Google ads, but your landing page should say, say the same thing. What like people are searching for. Ah, because that's what tells Google to show your ad for that keyword basically. Right. Cause, cause one of the things you said earlier, everyone is that on Google shopping, it's really crazy. You just post a URL and a budget. That's it. You don't do any interest targeting and they just read your page and figure it out based on that. Okay. Um, one question I forgot to ask you. So I'm going to go back to Facebook real quick. Cause this is important. Let's say you're testing 10 creatives in a week. How many do you expect will work? How many are you okay saying, yeah, I already know this percentage is not going to work. It's okay. Give me a percentage rough ballpark. Two or three. Maybe. Okay. So maybe 20 to 30% of your creatives actually work 70 to 80% get thrown out. Yeah. And like the creatives, which one are working? Like you just, you don't just stop there. After that, you need to test, like, you know, change the like first three, four second hook, like different sales angle, change the thumbnail of the creative. And like, you, like once the creative is working, now we want to, we know th this is the something working. Now we want to like, you know, like get the juice out of it and like test different variations of it. Got it. Got it. No, it makes, makes perfect sense. Um, 
Yeah, I'm looking at my notes. I mean, everything covered for there. With Would you say, like, of the 50, you said you spent maybe $30 million in traffic, you know, would you say, how much, what percentage roughly would you say of that went to Facebook versus Google? Just so people understand the difference in e-commerce. 20, 25 million. So most of it goes to Facebook, right? Google gets it because you're using Google mostly just to retarget. Yeah, because like we currently, we don't have those type of clients who's like, yeah. you know, a lot of searches are Google, but like Facebook yeah. is like majority for majority of clients are f- focuses okay. on Facebook. Now I know that for Facebook ads in the digital advertising world, like for me, for like information products and webinars and all ad costs have been going through the, through the roof. Are you seeing the same in e-commerce or no? Yeah. Like, like ad cost will go right every year. Like, you know, the ad cost will go, but like you need to figure out your own stuff. Right. So like mm-hmm. there is like there is also iOS 14 updates and all those things are going on, and like every day they like you know the the things like become difficult. But like you need to make things work for you. How you can like you know like increase your AOV and play around it. So yeah, like yeah. I feel the cost will go up, but you need to somehow run that because there's no other way out of it. So I have a question. I want you to plug yourself because I'm super impressed, and I hope that anyone who is running an e-commerce store. How can someone reach out to you? How if there's someone has an e-commerce store, they want to look at hiring your agency. Where do they go? Uh, you can search me on LinkedIn, like Badal Pandey, and they can also search me on Twitter. So I'm very active on LinkedIn as well as Twitter. So I post a lot of contents about like you know uh, scaling e-commerce brands, how we create ads. So like like I'm doing this day in and day out, and like I learn there are a lot of mistakes we do. There are a lot of like you know things we learn on a daily basis. So I just push out there, like, you know, whatever we are learning and all those stuff. That's amazing. Guys, go reach out to him, follow him on Twitter, follow him on LinkedIn. How many, you know, I love this organic strategy you have for getting clients. It's, uh, I've talked to other people too that said it works like a charm. How many clients per month do you estimate you bring on thanks to your simple social media marketing that you're doing for your agency? Like, basically, like, you know, I don't like, maybe two two clients this month so i don't like you know we don't need a lot of clients because we are a small agency as well yeah. as like you know second thing is like i focus on like you know i uh, like you know the clients whom i can retain a lot right so like whenever i'm seeing when we, before starting the ad like you know work with them i see like you know if this is something i can make it profitable because there are some clients with whom like you know we are working for a year or something like that so like If like, you know, I can retain them longer. So that is like, you know, the best for me. So like whenever working with any client, I just feel like, you know, if I can close two clients a month, that would be enough because they will be with me like nine to 10 months. Like then, like I don't need a lot of clients. So that's that's amazing. What I wanted everyone to understand was look at that, right? So if you, if you sell a service, if you're an agency, stop trying to do all this crazy stuff. Badal just posts about what he's doing on Twitter and LinkedIn and he gets enough clients. Do you do any paid ads for your own agency? No, right? Just just the social media. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So everyone, I think people out there make it, we just make it overcomplicated. We make it more complicated than it really is to make money online. I mean, if you have an agency, go start posting content. I promise you, you'll get a client within the first few weeks if your content is good, right? Your content's gotta be good. Bado, what's next for you, man? You're doing killer stuff. What? Where do you grow? You're 20. You have the whole. You have your whole future ahead of you. Where are you going to grow from this? What's next? What's your big goal this year in 2022? Like there are some goals with the agency, so I can't speak here. But like, yeah, goal is there. So I'm not sure, like you know, what the end might look like. But I know, like you know, next step is like, uh, like I'm. I want to have one more person for like. Uh, managing the ad accounts and all those stuff. I don't know like where my end goal is, but my folk, I know like, you know, what my next step is and how I want to grow. And yeah, that's what I know. So you want to grow the agency. Do you, do you want to start your own e-commerce brand or you really want to focus on the agency right now? Uh, I feel like, you know, in terms of e-commerce, it's like really like little difficult to make it profitable and stay profitable with it. And also like, you know, you need to be very good at cash flow management and all those stuff you want to be successful with full with e-commerce. So that's what we're finding with the watch business. Oh, cash flow management is thank God I know how to do that. That's one thing I'm good at, but it's 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 tough. So like there are a lot of skill, but I feel like, you know, starting an agency like that has helped me to learn a lot of skill, like, you know, because 
I come from a background where I didn't know anything, right? So starting an agency has surely helped me to learn a lot of like, you know, business things. And I'm sure like I will do some more things, but I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to start e-commerce because I feel it's great. Like, you know, if you can start an e-commerce store and scale it to certain point and like you can take a great exit, right? But yeah. I feel like that's the best strategy to have, but I'm, uh, I haven't think about that. That's amazing, man. Congratulations on all your success. You are super impressive. You were so succinct also. I really want to compliment you on how quickly you just boom, 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 like gave the meat, gave the advice, which is why this episode is going to be shorter than my usual because I, I already got enough. I'm like, I, I know what to do. We'll have you back again in the future. Uh, maybe I'll give you an update based on what we did with our store, based on your feedback and advice. Um, thanks so much for being here, man. I, I'll leave you with final words. Anything you want to say to our audience? No, like, like scaling e-commerce is just like, you know, about your offer and like your like creatives and like, yeah, like and your uh, lifetime value, right? So don't overcomplicate it. Just focus on like, you know, making one thing work at a time and then like, you know, scale further. And like, if anything is not working, try to learn from the data and what like, you know, data is telling you, right? Because every piece of data is trying to tell you something, right? So let's say if, like, you know, if your ad is not working, break it down from each part, from your, your CTR to CTR to landing page view, from landing page view to add to cart to purchase, right? So if anything is not working, break it down. Don't be like, you know, I feel some people just get like, you know, this is not working, man, right? If it's not working, there's a reason behind it. And like learn from the data, what's data trying to say you and like, you know, work on that specific reason. And one thing at a time, then like if you will slowly work and then you will find successful. Oh man, amazing stuff. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for staying up late to make this happen. And to all of you watching, what is your excuse? Come on, Babel is here to prove to us anything is possible. And, you know, go make your dreams come true. Go make it happen. Listen, onicpodcast.com to binge listen to other amazing episodes. L-U-R-N.com. Make sure you follow Babel. We'll put his social media stuff in our show notes. Babel Pandey. Uh, go follow him. All right. Thank you so much for being on. And for those of you who are watching, what do I always say? When life pushes you, stand straight, smile, and push it the heck back. We'll see you on the next one. Go out there and fight for your dreams. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singal.